All right, guys, here we have a BMW 530 hybrid battery pack. This is a 12 kilowatt hour, and we're going to tear into it. But before we do so, let's check in with our safety correspondent, Damien McGuire. So before I start any working on the battery here or dismantling, now you'll see, yep, bare hands, but I do have a wedding ring. So I'm going to take that off put it in my toolbox because we don't want anything on our hands like rings watches jewelry anything meta metallic something like that gets across one of those nice low voltage and perfectly safe batteries it's going to cut your finger off and it'll it's kind of neat because it'll cauterize it too like so you won't bleed out but obviously you know 10 fingers are better than nine Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is just label this thing big red. This is going to be a red pack and I know I'm just going to write this on the lid and the lid comes off, but it doesn't matter. I just kind of want to start distinguishing between the two packs for whatever reason. I want to keep things straight. So Okay, so this is going to be our big red pack and no ring, no jewelry, no gold chain, no gold teeth. Putting on some semi rubber gloves and I do own a pair of the fancy high voltage gloves and I'm sorry, they're completely useless. The rubber gloves that go inside the protective gloves already tore on me and when I wear the double pair I can't work on this pack whatsoever, so I just, I own a pair, but, you know, I find these thin ones uh, a lot more friendlier to use. Okay, we have uh, 50 screws to remove here, but before we do that, uh, we want to check the voltage of the pack. And here we're going to use the multimeter. So I'm going to put it on volts and this is dc voltage and we want to plug these in one at a time when you're using a multimeter on a high voltage battery this is when you're at your most dangerous because most folks are going to do pretty much this right like we've always used a multimeter it's going to take a probe in each hand we're going to stick it in somewhere and that's perfectly fine. As you see, I'm reading 42 volts on this particular module. In fact, all the modules are at 42 volts. I checked earlier. But why is this the most dangerous time? Well, because 42 volts isn't too bad. But if we want to measure the entire pack, let's say we have a point here down around the contactor box where the two ends of the pack come together. What you don't want to do is if we just pretend this is it, is do this, okay? Because now you're, put, you're potentially putting yourself across a high voltage DC source. So let's not do that. So shove one in there, working one-handed. Shove this one in there. And, well, it's not reading anything really, and it's not supposed to. The pack is turned off, if you will. So, once we get in there, we have to figure out how to turn the pack on. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, so for right now, we're just going to remove the lid. We're going to bypass what is called a safety box in there, and we're going to try to take a voltage reading from the leads coming from the cell modules to the safety box rather than out of the safety box. So we'll regroup and do that. <clears throat> okay, guys, so these, I don't know what size these are. I'm going to use a, uh, a Torx T40 here. That's what I've used on the other packs. These are metric something, and I have metric hex, but none of them fit, so I don't care. I'm just going to use this thing. We got to go 50 times around, so here we go.
So this is really nice hardware. I unfortunately haven't been able to find use for these uh, bolts that come out of these packs. Put in the comments if you have. No matter which bolts out of this pack I took out, they were either too long, too short, too skinny, too thick. I could never use them. So if you found a use for them on your EV, let us know in the comments. It'd be kind of fun to hear how you use them. Okay, guys, on to the next step. I, I know you probably can't see me. That's okay. I'll spot down here. We're going to take the lid off. And what's nice about these BMW packs is that the, there's a rubber gasket, but it's not glued on. There's no adhesive or any type of stickiness on it. So it should come right off. So let's take a peek. Okay, and there we have it. So let me remove the rubber gasket and show you that it's just laying on here. It's not stuck or glued on there. Okay, gentlemen, so I want to point out something, some differences that just jump out at me, and that's these top sort of shells here. That used to be just black plastic and now have this whatever material, Kevlarish, uh, carbon fiberish, whatever it is. I have no clue. But this is a module four from the nine kilowatt hour battery pack. This is what they look like. And that's this is identical to this. Okay. So this is number four of the old one. It would go here. We have the BMS module right here on the side. There's a BMS module right there on the side as well. The BMS modules are different. I can already tell. They just physically appear different. I'm sure they have a different part number. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I just wanted to point out real quick that they do, the modules do look different, okay? So let's keep going. Okay, guys, so I'm going to point out the components of this battery module using my laser pointer. There's more than just battery modules in here. There's six of these, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. But I want to point out some of the other stuff that is in here. So over here, I know it's hard to see, but I'm just going to go quickly. This is the master BMS module, and it talks to these slave modules. They're either on the side or on top. Okay, so we have BMS. We also have this piping. This is for cooling. This battery pack is liquid cooled. It uses uh, probably the same mixture as your air conditioning in the vehicle, in the car. Okay, so we have BMS, we have the cooling, we have the modules. And then on this side right here, that's very important and that's what we're after today. This is the safety box, which is uh, a contactor box. There's a positive contactor in there, a negative contactor in there and a pre-charge relay, a fuse, and a resistor. And this is what turns on electricity to come out of here. Okay, so we have a safety box, BMS box, slave BMS, cooling, and the modules, okay? Underneath the modules, you'll see later that there are what I would call radiators. It helps with the cooling. And yeah, and then of course we have the orange is the high voltage here. And the black wire harness is the low voltage, which would be more like logical. And the low voltage would run on either 12 volts or 5 volts, whereas this is piping 400 volts and ton of amp. Okay, so today's video, I'm going to end after we read the voltage of the battery pack here of the six modules before they, the electricity enters the safety box. So all these wires here are live right now, but not to out here. So this is, this right here is a lead from module one, and it actually kind of crosses over and comes into the safety box right here. So we're going to unplug that. And then this side here is module six, and it comes in and it goes to right here. So we unplug those and we have to be careful because these are, these are live. Now I may also remove the output. So, so this lead is input to the safety box. This lead is input to the safety box. And these outside ones are output that go to here. 
okay? I, I may unplug these just so I can get a screwdriver under here to get these out because this is a pain in the ass. So let me see if I can. Okay, so I just took this out of the way so I can clip this underneath here. There is a clip right there. And I own a pair of plastic pliers for safety reasons, but again, I had no luck with them. The one time I used the safety pliers, the proper plastic pliers, I actually broke one of these clips. So I was trying to be, be good, be proper, and it backfired. Okay, so I know you're supposed to do one, this one-handed, but I'm a wuss. Okay, so we're just, we don't have to unplug these to test the, the module on these on these okay but I do it to just get them out of the way all right so we don't want to touch these at the same time you know like I can touch this with one hand like this and this one right here but I don't want to touch them both okay I mean these are these are protected but I still don't want to risk it okay so now what I'm going to do is get my voltmeter back, put it on voltage, and hopefully not look too foolish with this thing. So these will say, like this one says S minus, S is for safety box, and this one says S positive, so sorry, S negative and S positive. So what we want to do is just wedge that in there, okay, and then wedge this in there, okay, so as Damien pointed out, I'm not doing this, okay, I'm not holding both of them in there at the same time, like probing, touching them, okay, and we now have a reading, remember before we really didn't, it was like 0.3 or something silly, well now it's 346.7 volts. 346.7 so I'm going to write that down and that's you can run this pack down to like 300 volts so this is I would say this is like somewhere below 50% charge I'm just glad to see something on there okay so I'm gonna write that actually on the cover so that we know 346.7 okay so now I'm going to unplug this And then I'm just going to carefully put these back one handed, clip those in. Okay. These don't have to be plugged in really because there's nothing going into them right now. These are output to here. All right. Okay. And there we have it 346.7 volts on, on the big red pack. This is as far as I want to take it tonight. I just wanted to get the reading. I feel good about this reading. We'll charge this up to just under 400, maybe like 393, which is what I call like 90%. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap up the video for today. I'm going to keep these short and sweet and just achieve one simple goal every night. I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and try to charge this pack. I think maybe to charge it. I don't know if I'm going to charge it using this safety box or the one that's already in my truck from the old pack. I just kind of figured I'll hook this up to the truck, disconnect the pack that's there now, connect this one, use the old safety box to turn this pack on, and I'll see if I can charge it. Or I may dig deep in here and find out if the safety box is different or the same. That's one of the questions that I have. Is are, Did BMW switch to a different... Um, uh, safety box. It appears they switched to a different BMS system and the modules are configured a bit differently. So we'll get to that in a later video. But yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.